Hi everyone, it's me, Maria. Welcome to my channel. Last summer, I filmed a reaction slash ex scientific explanation video of the first half of Finding Nemo. I will link the video down below and I promised that I would do a part two. I'm not gonna sit here and pretend that I did not watch the second half of the movie. I did. So this is not really gonna be the reaction, a reaction video. It's gonna be more a video where I explain some facts and some science related to things that are happening in the movie. So let's get into it. Fabio, any of you heard of P. Sherman 42 Wallaby Way, Sydney? Sydney? Oh, sure. You wouldn't know how to get there, would you? What you wanna do is follow the EAC. That's a uh, East Australian cur so let's talk about our fish friends here, shall we? An organized group of fish of the same species with a coordinated swimming is called a school of fish. Gathering in groups can bring fish several advantages. For instance, it can help them avoid predators, increase their success of finding food, and it increases their chances of finding a mate. Fish can also form groups without forming schools. If a group of fish stays together for social reasons, in biology this is called shoaling. And only if the group swims in the same direction in a coordinated manner, like the guys that we just saw here, it's called schooling. So schooling fishes are also shoaling, but shoaling fishes are not necessarily schooling. Don't move. This is bad, Dory. Whoever can hop the fastest out of these jellyfish wins. Okay. Rules, okay. rules, rules. Okay. You can't touch the tentacles, uh, only the tops. So this is true. Only the tentacles of jellyfish sting. And that is because the sting is caused by nematocysts. And nematocysts only exist on the tentacles. A nematocyst is a specialized cell that contains a kind of a coil, a venomous coiled thread and a barb that can be projected and used as a self-defense technique or to capture prey. Basically, this coil thread is under pressure inside an nematocyst, and when something touches it, it stimulates the cell. This causes the operculum, which is a kind of a tissue that is covering the nematocyst, to fly open and it projects the, and, and it uncoils the thread and projects the barb to the outside, usually into the skin of the prey, the predator, or just an unlucky passerby. This barb then releases the venom to the unfortunate creature that came in touch with this organism. The venom differs from jellyfish to jellyfish, and that is the reason why only some jellyfish are really harmful for humans. Some might be deadly, while others might not even cause an itch. <laughs> Oh, he's he so lives, awesome. hey, dude! So, what brings you on this fine day to the EAC? So the Eastern Australian Current does exist, or the EAC, if you're gonna be cool. Okay, cringe. And every summer it does transport thousands of fish from the Great Barrier Reef into the Sydney Harbour. But it is really not a visible swirling tube that you can just jump in and surf on. Unfortunately, the current is much bigger than that, transporting 40 million cubic meters of water southward. This is equivalent to 16,000 Olympic pools. It is almost 100 kilometers wide and more than 1.5 kilometers deep. Did you see me? Did you see what I see? You so totally rock, squirt! So give me some fin. Noggin. Dude. These guys are green turtles and they are one of the seven existing marine turtle species. And there is something here which is not accurate. Bum, bum, bum. It is highly unlikely that baby sea turtles will ever find their parents ever. Females go to sandy beaches to lay their eggs and once they are laying they cover them but they immediately leave the site and they do not come back to help the baby turtles in any process from them hatching until they go to the water, which means they hatch and, they're make, and they make their way into the ocean all by themselves. It might happen that during their, you know, just casual swimming around, they might encounter their one of their parents, but there's really no evidence that suggests that they would even recognize each other as kin. So as much as it would be adorable to imagine little squirts, swimming around and Mr. Crushes swimming around with little squirts. It really does not seem like this is something that happens in nature. One other fun fact that they did not include here about turtles is that turtles actually breathe air. So they do need to come to the surface to inhale 
to replenish the oxygen and replenish the air in their lungs. They can submerge for hours at the time when they are resting, but while swimming, they do need to come rather often to the surface to breathe. Oh, 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 big fella, big fella, whale. Okay, the best. maybe he only speaks whale. I laughed so hard in this part. What are you doing? Orca. Didn't it sound a little orca ish? It doesn't sound orca. It sounds like nothing I've ever heard. It's just as well he might be hungry. Don't. I didn't find concrete answers, but it seems to me that this is a blue whale. For me, honestly, whales are probably one of the most interesting animals out there. They have always fascinated me since I was a child, and they still do. And I know I'm not alone in this. And I think one of the reasons why whales are so beloved and why people feel so attracted to understanding these animals is the mystery that actually still surrounds them. And communication, or the way they communicate, is a big part of this mystery. All whales produce sounds to communicate. Each species has their own repertoire of sounds, and it even appears that same species individuals, but that live in non-overlapping geographical regions, have different sounds. Also, some whales sing. In this case, a song is considered a repetitive acoustic pattern that is highly predictable and can be produced over long periods of time. Whales known to have songs are humpback whales, blue whales, minke whales, fin whales, and bowhead whales. This doesn't mean that there aren't others that also have songs, it's just the, these are just the ones that have been actually identified and recorded. All of the identified singers so far have been male, and it has been suggested that songs communicate male fitness to females. However, it, at times, it seems that it might also be associated with certain feeding behaviors. There's really a lot we still don't understand about the communication amongst these animals, and there are researchers that dedicate their entire life research to understanding it. Over the last centuries, especially due to whaling, the population of blue whales all around the world is severely depleted. A recent study puts their global population somewhere between 10 to 25,000 individuals, which, if we consider the entire ocean, is really not much. We are going to be petty and we really want to analyze the movie for its scientific accuracy. I'm pretty sure that a fish like Dory could not produce the same sounds as a whale. You're welcome, knowledge. Crikey! All the animals are gone mad! Uh. <laughs> Smack your dad. I said uh, hi. <laughs> okay, guys. If you throw an animal down a sink or a toilet, it, you are not freeing it. You are killing it. If your intention is to free it, you have to inform yourself on how you can do that. Different fish have different ways that they can be freed. Some might not even be freed and, and, and survive afterwards. Most of them probably won't because they are used to being fed, so they don't even know how to look for food. And they also don't know how to avoid predators. So best thing is that you take care of the animal that you have responsibility for. But if you want to free it, throwing it down the toilet is not the solution because it will die or the sink, or, or a dentist sink. I'm aware that the intention was of the movie makers was not to be accurate in this point. They just needed a way for Nemo to get out of the dentist's office into the sea. This was a way they found, F fair enough. But in reality, he would probably be kaput, okay? So, proceed. <laughs> That was harsh. <laughs> totally. Seriously, Marty. Did you really do all the things you say you did? A uh, pub. Yeah. <laughs> there they are. Hello. Look, scars, your friends. Don't be alarmed. Oh, we just wanted to make sure that our newest member got home safely. Now go have an adventure. Ah, that's delightful. The end. So, this was it everyone. I apologize for the changing in light. It's been clouds everywhere, not clouds everywhere, it's raining, not raining, windy, I don't know. Weather is going crazy. Please let me know if you have any further questions regarding these animals, regarding anything 
marine related or just anything else that you want to ask. Since I have been away from YouTube quite a lot, I have been more active on Instagram. I post a lot of marine related stuff there and sometimes some science related, PhD related stuff. So if you want to keep up a bit more with me, you can follow me there somewhere. It's gonna appear somewhere here and it's down also below. So this was it. Thank you much for watching and I hope to see you in the next one.